Okay, so we're going to run through the basic Shiatsu College introductory supine routine. And Maria has very kindly offered to be our model for today. Hello. <laughs> so we start by sitting comfortably beside your receiver where you can easily contact the Hara. And <clears throat> run through your alignment first before you turn your attention to the Hara. Just tune into yourself. So head floating, sacrum sinking. Really relax hips, knees, ankles, feet. Relax shoulders, elbows, wrists and fingers. Take a nice easy breath down into the hara. And when you're ready and comfortable, turn your attention to the hara. Just checking. Make sure you know where the rib cage ends and the hip bones. And then <coughs> float the hand and we're going to check the upper hara. And compare it to the lower. Just anything you notice. And we'll come back there at the end. So now moving into working the leg, mother hand on the hara, working hand on the top of the leg. Tune into a sense of connection between the hands. Imagine something flowing down the front of the leg, just to the mid, outside of the midline, heading down to the front of the foot. Shift your body weight away, simple crawl position and then bringing it forward as you release the spine and relax. Palm down the leg. Bring your mother hand down to the knee to allow you to relax onto the top of the muscle just outside the leg bone. and squeeze the foot. If the leg rotates a lot laterally, you might want to come closer and just sit down to access the lower leg. And then we'll thumb. Same procedure, mother hand, weight of the relaxed hand only. And <clears throat> working hand at the top of the leg, sense of connection between them. And thumb perpendicular to the surface. Relax body weight, release your spine. Thinking into the body and out into the key field at the same time. Do bring up a supporting knee if it's comfortable for you. Accessing the body weight by relaxing the hips. This is the stomach meridian along the top of the ridge of muscle. And it's about nurture and grounding and earthing, giving a sense of support and calming the mind. Okay, so after the leg comes the foot. And we start by sitting comfortably beside the foot. Here's a moment for you to check your alignment and relax. And then I'm going to take hold of the ankle with this part of my hand just below the ankle bone. And then <clears throat> I can support the whole ankle, got a bit of movement even in the foot. 
and if the leg rotates a long way, you can even bring your knee forward to support it a little. Then bring this hand in to take hold of the foot and you can just rotate the ankle against the support of this mother hand. And this rotation can flow up through the whole body. If you're <coughs> fully relaxed, you should even see your receiver's nose moving. And then we move around to below the foot. I'll demonstrate on this side. Take hold of the foot with both hands, fingers underneath, support, and opening the foot. Imagine creating space between the bones. And the movement is a bit like kneading as though you're kneading dough. Then supporting, using this hand, fingers underneath, and press down between the little bones. Take each toe in turn, rotate and stretch. There are lots of wonderful acupuncture points on the foot that are particularly useful for calming the mind and for treating problems at the opposite end of the body, head. So headaches, eye problems. <clears throat> Each one in turn. Find the toe, take hold of it, rotate and stretch. Swap hands if you need to be comfortable. Give it one more opening. So, leg, foot, other leg, other foot. And now we're going to connect up the chest before we come to the arms. So coming up into lunge position. <clears throat> and there are lots of different ways you can do this. I like to just check out the rib cage. And then use the sides of the hands to come up either side of the sternum. You can do it a couple of times. And now bringing the body weight right forward so that we can be perpendicular to this surface. You have to come quite a long way forward to open the upper chest. Onto the shoulders. Again, bring the body weight forward to open the shoulders. When you've done one arm and hand, before moving round to repeat on the other side, we can just connect up with the shoulders here. You can sit and just palm out across the shoulders, a bit like a cat. And even thumb out along the top of the shoulders. Here's a nice way of getting perpendicular to the upper chest. And if you turn your hand to take the shoulders, bring your body weight forward, relax, and open those shoulders. So after opening the chest and the shoulders, we can move to working the arm. And the same as with the leg. Mother hand over the front of the shoulder, working hand beside it. Tune into the sense of connection between the hands. Look down the arm, imagine down the arm. Think of something flowing down the arm. And when you're ready, adjusting your body weight so you can just relax 
and palm down the arm. And onto the palm of the hand. And again, you can do this a couple of times. And then thumbing, same procedure. Two hand connection, check you're relaxed. Thumb down, pretty much the midline. Don't worry too much exactly where you are. It's actually the heart protector meridian, which is about circulation, but also about calming the mind and the spirit. Great for insomnia. Midline, onto the front of the wrist, and the middle of the palm. So moving now to working the hand, I'm facing the hand you see now. I open it and place my little finger in here and my other little finger in here to open the palm. Fingers underneath, see, opening the palm. And then place the hand down, relax and thumb the palm. Then taking up the hand, relax the arm, and taking each digit in turn, rotate and gently stretch. You can take the finger between your knuckles and remember you're stretching the whole length of the arm, not just the finger. So we're going to work the face, lovely place to work and actually it's really important to use a cloth to avoid the sticky hands, messing up makeup, anything like that. But for demonstration purposes I'm going to show you first of all without. So sitting comfortably as close as you need to allow your shoulders and arms to be relaxed, placing your hands either side of the head and I'm actually going to use my thumbs to kind of palm out across the forehead and just relax your hips to access your body weight in this position. Don't be afraid of using body weight. The bones of the skull are very strong. So you can do that a couple of times, palming out or thumbing out rather across the forehead and then there's a lovely special point here that's used for calming and we can place one hand one thumb over the other and just contact yin tang it's called mind calming point and then leave one thumb there and thumb away along the midline again this is a special meridian that runs along the midline just as far as is comfortable towards the top of the head, keeping your arm relaxed. Notice I'm actually resting my arm on my leg here. And then, with your fingertips, just if you place the first joint on the, on the eyebrow, you can just tip your fingers in to the very corners of the eye. And then up to the 
corners of the eyebrow and then turning the hands and thumbing along the same lines. Again, this is the bladder meridian, the one that we worked on the back, either side of the midline. Just as far as is comfortable. There's a nice point here, in the middle of the forehead, that's used for treating stress, basically, a very relaxing point. And again, you can thumb away from that point over the top of the head as far as is comfortable. Then using the side of the hand, imagine that you're palming this line on the outside of the face. Very relaxing. You can do that a couple of times. It's often the place where you'll notice their breath change as they've become really relaxed. And then supporting with the heels of the hand here, if, if you like, bring your fingertips to just outside the nostrils and <clears throat> relax your weight in to that point. Welcome fragrance, it's called. Really great for clearing the nose. And then following round with your fingertips, the line of the upper jaw. A lot of people hold tension in the jaw, so really relax your own jaw as you penetrate a bit of key into the jawline. And palm down the side again. And then fingertips underneath, thumb on top, and just squeeze round the lower jaw. Into those tight little corners. And now I'll show you with the cloth. So with the cloth, the face routine looks like this. Always careful not to cover the nose. Sides of the thumbs. Relax hips. Drop your body weight in. Palm. One thumb on top of the other. Leave one there and thumb away. As far as is comfortable. Fingers together into the corner of the eye, corner of the eyebrow, and then bilaterally thumb away. Surprisingly, extraordinarily relaxing. Palm down the side of the face. This is often where your clients nod off. Then making sure not to cover the nose. Fingertips just beside the nostrils. And then follow the line of the upper jaw. Relaxing my hands again and releasing the jaw. Take the cloth below, thumbs on top, fingers underneath, squeeze around the lower jaw. So now they're all lovely and relaxed after working the face and we're going to do a bit of work on the neck. Start by moving back so that you can rest your forearms on the mat and I'm going to roll her head <coughs> onto my hand on one side and then the other 
and actually I'm going to place my fingertips around the base of the cranium at the occiput. So <clears throat> find your place, move back so you can really relax and lengthen your own neck and just explore with your fingertips around the base of the skull. Penetrating in with a little bit of key. And let's try rolling the head first to one side, onto the fingers, and then to the other side. You'll usually find one side's a little bit tighter than the other. In Maria's case, a little bit tighter this side. So I'll focus first on the easier side, resting the weight of the skull onto my fingers and just projecting a little key into those hollows at the base of the skull. And then the other side. And now we're just going to give, you can spend as long as you like, by the way, it's very nice working the neck. Then a little stretch, simple but powerful. I'm just going to open up the neck by drawing the head back towards me with my fingertips. So just take an easy breath, relax, and breathe out and stretch. And then down to the feet to send the energy back down the body. So now with the cloth, take the head, Roll and lift, so you can take the cloth and draw it underneath. And then, rolling the head onto the hands, settling yourself down so you're really relaxed, and fingertips penetrating around the base of the skull. Cradling the head, exploring with the fingertips. Roll the head onto the fingers, projecting key. And the other side. Notice if either side is a little more tight. Relax your own neck. And now gently stretch the neck by drawing your fingertips towards you. It's a subtle movement, but quite strong. 